we are going to start creating a contact list on the contacts page. And what we are going to use is list view. So in this video, let's start learning the basics of using list view. So a few videos ago, I mentioned that there can be only one view on the top level inside a page. So in this case, you can see that on the top level is the vertical stack layout and everything is inside it. We don't need the buttons. We don't need the labels. We will talk about the, the layout later. Uh, today, we are going to use list view. So we can say list view. And if we run it, you can see that there's, there's nothing on the screen. But list view has background. So when we turn on the background, like we give the background some color, for example, ground color equals blue. We, we can see that everything become blue. Right? That means that list view occupies the whole page. You need to know that uh, list view is, it's not like there's, when there's nothing in the list, it's not occupying the whole screen. I uh, need to know that it always occupies the whole screen. Uh, and uh, I like to give it a transparent background because in, in different uh, devices, for example, not devices, a different type of operating systems like Android or iOS, the background's color sometimes um, is slightly different. So to make it consistent, just make it transparent. Also that you need to know that uh, list view, it automatically has the, the scroll uh, functionality. So later when you know that uh, there's some such a thing that called scroll view, right? So you, you can actually see a scroll view is a layout. A scroll view is a type of layout. Uh, of course, there can be only one root uh, view in here. So scroll view and list view, they, they're kind of uh, conflicting with each other. You can only have one top level. So you, if you put list view inside a scroll view, it's going to work, but the, but it doesn't make sense because list view itself already has the functionality of scrolling. Uh, if you add another scroll scrolling functionality on top of it, it's going to affect each other. So when you have a list view, don't add scroll view. Uh, if you go to definition, a scroll view is a type of layout, right? So we don't need scroll view. I just want to mention that when you have a list view, don't add scroll view. Okay. So we have a scroll view, but there's nothing in it. The first thing we need to do is to make scroll view display something. So when we come to the code behind, we can see that we still have the event handlers, but we don't have the buttons anymore. So we can delete the event handlers. So now in order to show something in the list view, right, we need to have an array of something to display, right? So let's say we have a list, uh, of a list of strings and this strings, we call it, uh, let's say contacts, right? And then we are going to have this and what's going to be inside it is just a list of uh, strings. And let's say there's there's John Doe. And so we have these uh, names. And then we will need to provide these data to the list. So how do we do that? We need to first of all have a name so that at the code behind we can have a reference, reference the list view. So we have list contacts. Right. And then we can say item source, so item source. The type of item source is I enumerable. So we can put contacts over here. And now let's run the application and see whether there are any changes. Now you can see that we have these contacts nicely displayed in the list view. So this is a very, very basic uh, data binding. Uh, when I display this list view in here, you can see there's uh, separators, right? There's separators. And uh, if uh, you click on it, right, basically when an item is selected, there's a default uh, color highlighting which item you selected. All right, so if we go over here and let's format it nicely, different properties in here or attributes. And then uh, there's a, there's a, separator right there's separated color uh there's separator visibility if you don't like it you can turn it off right? 
uh, if you want to change the color, for example, uh, I want to change it to, let's say, agua, just for uh, demonstration purpose. I don't like the, the color, but you see, the color has changed. Right? And if you don't like the separator at all, then you can use visibility. Uh, you can set it to none. And then uh, coming over here, you can see that there's no separator anymore. Uh, I do like the default one, which is showing the separator. But maybe we can change it to silver. Right? Change it to silver. And then uh, the color becomes silver, which is very similar to the default one. The next thing I want to show you is to actually bind it to a class, right? We can't always have data in uh, in a stream because uh, context has like names, phone numbers, uh, maybe emails, maybe addresses. So it's better to use a class to do that. So let's stop debugging and let's uh, create a contact class over here. Uh, Later, we're going to separate that contact class in a different class library, uh, which is the correct way to do things. When you go to a company, you will never see people have the class defined in the, in the, in the same uh, file, right? There are two different classes in the defined same file. Sometimes it happens, but most, most of the time you have uh, your core objects, right? The core classes, the business core classes in a different class library which we're going to do later. We're going to follow the clean architecture or the clean code approach. Right, for now, for demonstration purpose, I'm going to have a class over here, which is going to be called contact. Right, And then we are going to have just some simple properties. For example, maybe we'll have name, maybe, maybe email. Instead of a list of strings, we are going to have a list of contacts. List of contact over here change to contact and then we're going to initialize uh, these contacts so I have a list of contacts and now uh, I don't have to change this and let's let's run it and see what's going to happen okay so let's build it and run it again all right so we have something displayed but this time unfortunately these people are not being displayed but class names are being displayed Right, the class names along with namespaces being displayed. Why is that? So the default behavior of assigning a list to the item source is that the list view will take each one of these object and run a two string. When you run a two string, whatever it gets, it will be displayed. Right. So, for example, if I set a breakpoint over here, right, and then I'm going to stop it and run it again. And let's trigger the breakpoint, and you will see what I mean. Okay, so we have these contacts. So, let's actually uh, do a quick watch. And then, if I do, like, take the first one, which is zero in the index, uh, we can see that we have the first one, which is John Doe. And then if I do a two string, let's see, what is the value? You can see that the value is exactly the one that is being displayed in that list, right? So this is what I mean. When you just bind, when you just assign the context to the item source, it's going to take each one of those contacts and run a two string. It's going to just display that the result of two string inside the list. So in this case, it's just the namespace plus the class name. So that's not really what we want, right? Of course, to fix this problem, you can come over here and override the two string method so that you can display whatever you want. But that's not really the proper way to do it in .NET Mog. A correct way to do it is to use uh, data binding, which means that if we assign this to item source, that is actually okay. But we need to tell the list view what to display and how to display it. And the way to do that is to go to the front end in the XAML file. And then over here, um, we need to give it a template, right? So because we are trying to tell 
a list view exactly how to display the item so we need to specify that in in the template and we can use we can say list view dot item template right it's item template because each item in the list is an item right that's why it's called item template and then we have data template so the, the data template is basically just just the item template and inside it we can have uh, a different type of cells we can have view cell which is the most flexible approach uh, there's uh, there's this image cell right and there's uh, the basic one is text cell so we can try to use text cell for now the text of that is the one that I want to show uh, for now so what is the text of that we can say binding Binding and name. Right. So basically, with the curly braces, we are just saying that we are targeting a object, right? So if you have worked with JavaScript before, a curly brace it refers to a object. So what is the object we are referring to? It is the one that is is being uh, bound to the item. So what is being bound to the item? Right. You can see that we have context as the item source. So of course, each item is a one of these contact, right? So this, without specifying the source by default, it refers to the contact object, right? Which is bound to the item, to the item. We're specifying an item com template. Of course, this is referring to the object that is bound to the item, which is a contact. So that's why uh, in here, this binding just means that we are referring to the object that is being bound to the item. And then here we're just saying, what is the pass? We can say pass equals to the property of that object, which is name. Okay, we can see that. You won't get any uh, intelligence over here. It doesn't really know. It's just a string. Okay, this this is just a string. So it doesn't really know, but uh, you you just have to type it directly. So so here the pass is a default property of the binding class, and you can just put name directly over here because it's a default property. So you you can omit the pass. Uh, so you can put name over here. It just tells dot name Maui that we are trying to display the name property of the contact class, right? The context object. So with this change, if we run the application, now you can see that the names are being displayed again, right? Another property of the text cell is called detail. So I'm going to show you what it is now this detail is also a string but again you can use binding right so we're binding to the property another property of the context class uh, and of course the only other property we have is the email so we can use email now let's see what it looks like when we come over here you can see that we have the names and then the detail at the bottom the names are highlighted Right. It's pretty nice, but if you think that everything is kind of squeezed together, so we can change the the height of the row, right, or, or the height of the item. But it's called row height. Right. So, for example, if we say 100, and then let's take a look at what it looks like. Each one of those is pretty tall. So maybe change that to 80, and that looks much better, but it's still too much maybe 70 yeah 70 looks much better let's say let's say 65 okay so now it looks much better so these are all the things I want to cover for today we basically cover some basics of a list view right how to data bind to it how to adjust the appearance and in the next few videos we are going to use list view for our context application I'll see you in the next one